With new teams arriving and old teams leaving, it's time to reflect on the Big 12. And what better way than to rank schools all time using a tier list? D tier is bottom of the barrel, S tier is perennial powerhouse. Let's start with the schools at D. Just like the old Big 12 slogan, one true champion, there is only one true D tier team here, and that is Kansas. To give you an idea, this past season was considered an impressive one for the Jayhawks, and they finished 6-7. In fact, Lawrence doesn't see much winning going on in general. Over 27 years in the Big 12, Kansas has a conference record of 45-182. and They have had only one season with a winning record in conference play during that stretch, only three overall winning seasons, and six seasons where they won zero conference games. However, the Jayhawks have made five bowl appearances over that span and are an impressive 3-2 in those. Kansas did have their most magical season in 2007, winning 12 games and barely missing a shot at the Big 12 title game and national championship. Unfortunately, their inability to build off that sits them firmly at the bottom of the conference. But who knows, the best may be yet to come. The first C-tier team is Iowa State. The Cyclones are a Big 12 staple that just always seem to be a step behind everyone else going 76 and 152 in conference play. They've had their moments, including lately under Matt Campbell. Iowa State was on a five-year bowl streak before last season, the longest in school history. Speaking of bowl games, they have made their fair share, making a bowl about half the time during their 27 years in the Big 12 and going five and eight. However, the Cyclones have only finished the season ranked twice in 2000 and 2020. The 2020 season was the mountaintop for the program, going 9-3 and, and making the Big 12 title game, their only appearance in school history. The question now will be whether or not Matt Campbell can return to his winning ways, or if it's back to the drawing board for Iowa State when conference realignment finalizes. Next is West Virginia. The Mountaineers entered the Big 12 with promise, having won 9 or more games each of the 7 years prior. Unfortunately, they struggled to replicate that success, racking up a 47-51 and record in conference play through 11 seasons. Over that span, they have finished with a winning conference record just four times, but have managed to routinely make bowl games, unfortunately going 2-6. and six. Their best ever conference finish was in 2016, where they finished 10-3 and three and were tied for second. But unfortunately for the Mountaineers, it was during the span that the conference eliminated the title game. The Neil Brown era hasn't exactly set the world on fire either, so we might need to see a change before West Virginia has another chance to climb to the top of the conference. Texas Tech also lands in the C tier. The Red Raiders have been pretty close to average, compiling a 107-121 and conference record over 27 years in the Big 12, including 18 winning seasons overall. Mike Leach had them playing their best ball, including the only five seasons during their Big 12 tenure that Tech has finished ranked. The 2008 season was a standout. We all remember Crabtree's touchdown grab to beat Texas. The Red Raiders finished 11-2 that year and were a 44-point blowout loss away from potentially making the national title. The latest stretch hasn't been kind. Tech has not finished a season ranked since 2010 and hadn't had a winning conference record until last year. The unfortunate truth is that Tech was just never able to crack into the elite of the conference. They have never made a Big 12 title game appearance and have honestly only been close once, that 2008 season. However, they have had many opportunities to play spoiler and a night game in Lubbock is rarely kind to opponents. Joey McGuire has the potential to change the program's trajectory, and Texas Tech plans to surprise some folks in the new Big 12. The final C-tier team is Missouri. The Tigers were another team that was very much a middle-of-the-pack Big 12 program. Over 16 years, they compiled a 63-66 conference record. Again, pretty average, but we can dig a bit deeper. When it came to division play, the Tigers finished in the top half 10 times, including two first-place finishes, back-to-back -back in 07 and 08. Shout out Chase Daniel. Unfortunately, Missouri wasn't able to finish the job, losing both times and becoming one of two schools that are 0-2 in Big 12 title games. The program did put together some impressive seasons, including winning 10 or more games and finishing ranked three times, along with making eight bowl games, going 4-4, four four, which pretty much sums it up. Missouri fans will be eagerly waiting to welcome Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC. The first team in the B tier is Texas A&M. The Aggies started off their Big 12 journey with a bang, making the conference title game twice and winning the conference title in their third season. That year, A&M finished with 11 wins. However, that was the highlight of the Aggies' Big 12 conference experience. Texas A&M compiled a 68-61 conference record over 16 years and spent most of the time middling in the Big 12 South. From 2000 to 2011, they finished no better than third in the division, besides a tie for first in 2010. 
The Aggies made bowl games but routinely embarrassed the conference, finishing with a 2-9 record over their time in the Big 12. Speaking of embarrassments, Texas A&M will look to bounce back from a rough 2022 season and what could be a last hurrah for Jimbo Fisher. Next, we have another early exit in Colorado. The Buffaloes finished their Big 12 campaign perfectly balanced as all things should be, a 60-60 record over 15 seasons. While the final chapter of their Big 12 journey finished somewhat unceremoniously, they did put together quite a stretch partway through. Over five seasons from 2001 to 2005, Colorado made the Big 12 title game four times. There is a catch, however. The Buffaloes do hold the distinction of having the worst Big 12 title game win percentage out of teams that have won a conference title, going 1-3 in, in appearances. Their best season was of course the one they captured the title, 2001, finishing the year with 10 wins and ranked 9th in the nation, although you could potentially make an argument for 96, the inaugural season of the Big 12. Their final five seasons in the conference, Colorado failed to finish with a winning record before heading out west. Over their time in the Big 12, the Buffaloes finished ranked three times and finished 4-4 four four in bowl games. It's been tough sledding lately, but all eyes will be on Colorado to see if Deion Sanders can complete an unprecedented program turnaround in Boulder. Baylor also lands in the B tier. The Bears were a difficult team to rank, mainly because you need to take the entirety of their Big 12 stay into account, which has been quite a roller coaster. They began as the conference doormat. From 1996 to 2009, Baylor didn't win more than five games in a single season. Partway through the Art Browse era, they took off, including six straight bowl wins, four ranked finishes, and four 10 plus win seasons before he was removed. The program was built back up by Matt Rule and then Dave Aranda. Overall, Baylor has a 79-149 conference record, which is the third worst win percentage in conference history. However, they finished the season ranked six times, including barely missing out on the college football playoff in 2014, and won the Big 12 title three times, which is tied for second in the conference. They've also appeared in the Big 12 title game twice, going one and one. There is no better way to describe their turnaround than to have attended a Baylor game pre- and post-success. Years ago, opposing team fans would vastly outnumber Baylor fans, and it felt like a home game for opponents. The day you'll see McLean Stadium is packed, and it honestly is a bit of a feel-good story. Balancing their past and present, I think Baylor fits in nicely at B. Now it's up to Dave Aranda and company to see if Baylor can stake a claim to a top spot in the conference. The next team in a packed B tier is Oklahoma State. OSU is a program that has found quite a home in the Big 12, building a 125-103 conference record over 27 seasons. Their first few years in the conference, they didn't turn too many heads, but the program has found a good amount of success since 2005 under Mike Gundy, including seven seasons of 10 or more wins. The banner year came in 2011, a season that saw OSU lose a single game in double overtime that ended up controversially costing them a berth in the national title game. That year, they did win their only Big 12 title, but they also made an appearance in the conference title game in 2021, losing by just inches. You can say what you want about OSU's inability to consistently climb the mountaintop, but they have been consistently impressive, making a bowl game 20 of the last 21 years, going 12 and 8. They've also finished the year ranked 10 times over that stretch which is a lot more than you can say about most teams. They are a top four team in the conference more often than not, but unfortunately just don't have the hardware to show for it. OSU will look to have a bounce back 2023 and will likely be a major contender in the new Big 12. Finally, TCU rounds out the B tier. The Horned Frogs entered the Big 12 as one of the hottest group of five teams in the nation, coming off four straight 11 plus win seasons and looking to take the conference by storm. While they haven't exactly done that, they've certainly made their mark. Over 11 seasons, TCU has put together an impressive 56-43 conference record, but it hasn't always been smooth sailing. The Gary Patterson experience has had its highs and lows, including three top 10 finishes nationally, a Big 12 co-title, and a berth in a Big 12 title game, but also four losing seasons. And of course, we all know what happened in 2022, an unfortunate loss in the conference title game, but becoming the first Big 12 team to win a college football playoff game. What was TCU's best finish? Was it winning the Big 12 but getting screwed out of a playoff berth in 2014? Or losing the Big 12 title game, winning a college football playoff game before taking a historic beat down in the national title game last season? I'll leave that discussion for Hypnotoad Nation. The Horned Frogs have made a bowl game all but three years of Big 12 play, going 5-3. After an impressive 2022, they look to continue their momentum under Sonny Dykes and take control of the conference moving forward. The first team in the A tier is Kansas State. 
K-State started their Big 12 journey as one of the most dominant forces in the conference, finishing with 11 wins in six of their first eight seasons and making three conference title games, winning one. An instrumental part of their turnaround was coach Bill Snyder, who is synonymous with Kansas State and has one of the most impressive coaching trees to date. Since then, they have had an up and down trajectory, including a coach Snyder return, seven losing seasons, and two additional conference titles. Most recently this past season when they upset TCU. A staple of the Big 12, the Wildcats amassed a 133-95 record over 27 years in the conference, and are tied for second in total conference championships with three. Kansas State finished the season ranked 11 times and tallied an 8-12 bowl record. It's hard to argue their best finish because the three years they won the conference title, they lost their bowl game. But you have a case for 98, 99, 2000, 2003, or 2012. The defending Big 12 champions are looking to continue the improvement they've seen under Chris Kleiman and are set to be a force to be reckoned with for the foreseeable future. Next, we have Nebraska. The Cornhuskers entered the Big 12 in the midst of a dominating run in the Big 8, led by legendary coach Tom Osborne. The two seasons Osborne coached the Cornhuskers were also the two best in their time in the conference, including a perfect 16-0 in regular season Big 12 play, two conference championship appearances, and one conference and national title. That 1997 national championship winning season was a special one, and marked the final season of Tom Osborne's illustrious coaching career. No coach after Osborne was able to replicate his success, but Nebraska held their position as an impressive program in the league, appearing in the conference title game on four more occasions, but winning only once. Over the 15 seasons the Cornhuskers remained in the Big 12, they went 121-81, the second best winning percentage in conference history. They were first or tied for first in the North Division nine of those years. Nebraska is third in the Big 12 with two conference titles and impressively tied for second in conference championship appearances despite their most recent being in 2010. Over their time in the Big 12, the Cornhuskers won 10 or more games 8 times, finished the year ranked 10 times, and amassed an 8-5 bowl record. Since leaving the Big 12, life hasn't been kind to Nebraska, but new head coach Matt Rule looks to right the ship and turn them into a contender in the Big 10. The final A-tier team is Texas. The Longhorns will always be able to stake their claim as the inaugural champions of the Big 12, winning the first Big 12 title game in 1996. Shortly after, the Mac Brown era began and Texas went on an impressive run that included a 9-year streak of winning 10 or more games, 4 Big 12 title game appearances, 2 conference titles, and 2 national championship appearances. It goes without saying that the highlight was the Vince Young-led 2005 national championship team. That also stands as the most recent team from the Big 12 to win a title, going a perfect 13-0 along the way and participating in an all-time classic against USC. However, since the Longhorns lost to Alabama in the 2009 title game, there has been a significant dip. From the tail end of the Mac Brown era, to Charlie Strawn, Tom Herman, and now Steve Sarkeesian, Texas has seen just one 10-win season and five losing seasons, which was almost unthinkable during their Big 12 heyday. Texas sits tied for second in total conference championships with three and have an impressive 149-78 conference record over 27 years, the third best conference winning percentage of any Big 12 school. They finished the season ranked 17 times and amassed a 14-8 bowl record. The Longhorns continue to bring in elite talent year after year, and things could get interesting as they take that talent into the SEC. Finally, the lone S-tier team, Oklahoma. The Sooners struggled through their first three seasons of Big 12 play, but after Bob Stoops came to town, it was a wrap. I'll lead with the only stat that truly matters when it comes to showing the Sooners dominance of the Big 12, and that is 14 Big 12 titles. The next closest teams have three. Oklahoma also boasts the best conference win percentage in Big 12 history, going 169-58 and over 27 years. 18 10-plus win seasons and 12 Big 12 title game appearances losing only one, which gives Oklahoma by far the best win percentage in Big 12 title games at just under 92%. The next closest is 50%. The banner year for the Sooners came in the 2000 season, a perfect 13-0 finish and a national title. Unfortunately for Sooner Nation, they haven't been able to climb that mountaintop since, going 0-3 in title game appearances and 0-4 in college football playoff games, which is the one mark on their resume. They also have an 11-13 bowl record. Despite not being able to finish seasons with a bane, there is no doubt that the Sooners have been the class of the Big 12 and the numbers don't lie. Speaking of going out with a bane, something will need to change in Norman after a disappointing 2022, if Brent Venables and company hope to add one more trophy to their case before heading to the SEC. Band of tier lists? Check out my expanded Big 12 and SEC tier lists here, and as always, have a great day and see y'all at the next one.